What's up YouTube? Sparky and Jimbo here and we're getting ready to start our through hike. It's finally that day. How long have we been waiting? A long, long time. A very long time. We're at the Ozark Highlands Trail, Lake Fort Smith, Western Terminus, and we're getting ready to get it on. It should be 14 to 16 days is what we've got allotted and uh, we're in good good spirits. We've already had our um, our intro beers. Oh, nice. We've got a couple beers and we are ready to rock and roll. We didn't do the whole cheers today. Yeah, we didn't get a cheers, but we'll cheers tonight. We're only going five miles. We're going to camp at a five mile spot. <clears throat> I had to work today, so I didn't get off till two. It is 10 till five. It's Friday the 8th and we're ready to get it on. You ready, Sparky? Absolutely. Let's get this Let's done. Let's do this thing. My phone, you have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> I've done it. So I've actually done this section twice. This is where I met Big D. Derek, we'll see him tomorrow night. He's our uh, going to be the birthday boy on Monday, so we're going to have a little throwdown in his honor. I can't wait to see him. I haven't seen him. He moved out of state, and well, of course he lived out of state, but he lived he moved to another state, and I have not got to see him for a minute. Sparky and him got to hook up on the Eagle Rock Loop a couple weeks ago, so super jealous of that. I didn't get to go. And, it was uh, fun. You should have been there. It was fun, and I should have been there. Freight train, and our buddy Lance was there. Yeah, I would have fit right in. On this trip, I brought my scale. We weighed our packs before we left to the car back there. I'm at 31.4, and Sparky's at 31.2, so we're very, very even. Uh, very even. Anything over 30 in my pack tends to be uncomfortable, so hopefully that's not gonna be an issue, but we're only going five miles, and we will, uh, have probably less water but there, it is right next to our creek so we'll probably drink most of our water before we get there and i really hope jack's creek has water in it because then we can drain our, our water resources the last couple miles and just kind of keep getting lighter and lighter that is the beginning of the trail right there we're going to walk over here to this overlook and check out the beautiful view of lake fort smith one of many beautiful views that we'll have on this trip. Okay, we're gonna sign in and we're gonna get this party started, so we'll talk to you after a bit. So Justin just found a snake. Not even a mile in. Man, that is beautiful. You gotta come up here and try to get a picture of his skin. Damn, that is absolutely beautiful. Look at those markings. They're brownish. See when he bends, like the bend goes towards us? It is such a beautiful color. Good eye, Sparky. Look at the color. Oh, Snake, I'm in love with you. You're beautiful. They really don't watch your face. I know. Dude, I cannot believe you saw him. I heard it. And then I looked over there and I'm like... That's a big boy, like, too. That's, on me. Like, nope. that's well over three feet. That's probably four feet. Uh, it's four to five. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Go on the trail. Good job, buddy. Well, it's 20 to 6 when we made it to the old chimney on the banks of the lake. Pretty cool. I feel like we're making pretty good time. We've only been walking for 40 minutes. And we're beyond two miles. We're probably getting really close to the halfway point of the day. Like I said, we're only gonna do about, <clears throat> about five miles or so. There should be a camp. If it's not occupied, there's a camp about five miles. So that's what we're aiming for. Okay, we are at Frog Bayou now. And it was looking like it was dry, just like the two times before which actually I'm not gonna, not gonna mind because taking my shoes off would take a little bit of time, which I don't want to spend right now. It's okay. Would like to see it someday with water in it though. That'd be kind of novel. All right, here we are. And it is bone dry. Boy, last time I was here, there was, even, there was a little bit of water over there and it is nothing. Yeah. I see mud down there. Yeah, there was water. The first few times there was water right there, but not today. 
Hey YouTube, this is uh, day one of our through hike of the OHT. I'm Sparky. Uh, we did 4.8 miles. We're at the campsite next to Jack Creek. Uh, it's been a pretty good trip so far. Pretty easy for so far. <laughs> uh, little issue that uh, I underestimated the amount of water uh, available. I actually thought the uh, um, Frog Bayou was going to have some. So I only packed like 1.7 liters, but made it here fine. I actually had like 1.2 liters left, but uh, tomorrow was going to be a big water gap. So uh, I was kind of worried about it, but turned out fine. We were at Jack Creek and uh, there's four or five major little pools, decent size, enough to get water in right next to us. It's a great campsite. Jimbo did chose this well. So, so far it's been great. Uh, see you tomorrow. All right, guys, it's 8 o'clock. Uh, today was a really good day. We, I felt like we made really good time. It, it only took us two hours to do almost five miles. Um, at the mile marker four, we saw some people camping, and it kind of got me nervous because this campsite that we're in is pretty popular because it's right next to Jack's Fork, and uh, it's, it's fairly dry, but there are some pools of water, and it makes me happy because I'd rather, you know, pull from that and then not have to not have to do my water bottles, I'll just use my Seenock bag, but whatever. Um, I gave Sparky a break on the, the fire and actually started the fire for us tonight, which made me feel good because I hadn't done it in a long time. Uh, he kind of spoils me on the fire thing and I thought it'd be nice to give him a break from it and let him kind of chill out while I did it. And it, it really felt good to do it too. The wood was really dry, it only took like a small pinch of lint to make that stuff flame up. I'm getting ready to eat, I brought a couple of avocados, I'm gonna eat those avocados and Probably dip into my, my scotch. I got some Oban Little Bay I'm going to drink on. I'm going to probably have one drink and uh, save the rest for tomorrow. And uh, really not a whole lot to report. It's only five five miles that we've done. Um, I'm very anxious. The, the trail the trail in some parts was kind of hard to see. Um, luckily, this trail is very worn and, and beat in. But there were spots where I had to kind of like really look to see where I was going. But... I'm really not worried about it. Tomorrow's going to be a big day, probably one of our hardest days overall. Uh, for one thing, we're going to we're still kind of green because we don't we've only done five. We're also going to be doing about 18 miles tomorrow, and we're going to be doing probably one of the hardest sections that I know of. It's going to be you know we're going to once we get to Hurricane Creek at Do past Dockery's Gap, it's going to be two big peaks going up to White Rock, and that is going to be pretty pretty good pretty good haul that that and then. We're going to have our first big water crossing, which will be Salt Fork, right there by Shores Lake. And uh, we'll cross that, and then we, we're going to camp at Spirits Creek, and hopefully we'll have our uh, birthday boy surprise guest there, Derek. Um, we're really excited to see him. And uh, anyhow, I'm going to get off here, and we've, we're already set up, and it's going to be a nice, cool night. I, it was 80, no, 71 a minute ago, I believe, and uh, it's going to drop down into the 60s, and it's going to be wonderful. So peace out, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Saturday the 9th, it is 8-12. Justin's finished up packing, I'm ready to go. It's a pretty good, pretty good night. I strung up right there, Justin strung up right over there. There's a little bit of water in our Drags Creek, just enough for us to, enough to do our thing. Got a couple puddles here. But pretty dry though. But like I said, there's just enough, we got some water. Had a sweet little fire, dug the pit out for the next guy's gonna have one up to dig it out. That's all I got to say. We got a long day, like I said yesterday, 18 and a half miles to Spirits Creek. That'll be 20 mile marker 23 and a half is where we're gonna gonna camp for the night and hopefully a big deal make it by then. He's gonna drive to County Road 101 and park and walk back towards us. And uh, I haven't seen him in uh, man six months probably. Anyhow since like section four of the OT, it's been a minute. It is 10.35 a.m. Saturday the 9th. We're at Dockery's Gap Trailhead. Sparky's gonna register us in. I am going to put water in my cold soak. So when we get down to Hurricane Creek, we can have a lunch. So it's gonna take us a minute to do this. That's blue, that's a spur trail to the actual parking lot to Dockery's Gap. We did, I've got a video of that on my dockery's, my section one uh, Lake Fort Smith to Dockery's Gap video with Angela. 
Anyhow, we're gonna get this thing in. I'm getting kind of hungry, so we're gonna try to hurry this along. All right, so we're somewhere between mile marker 12 and 13, and we just passed a super cool guy named Jose, who's out here that lives in Tulsa, but goes to the University of Oklahoma in Norman. And uh, he ID'd me, said he'd been seeing some of my videos, and uh, told me thank you for, for doing them because he used it to scout to see what the trail was like. And it always makes me super happy when people do that. Jose, you're a cool guy, man. It was really nice meeting you. Um, let's see, what have I not told you since last time? We stopped at Hurricane Creek at like mile nine, nine, nine and a half, something like that, and ate some lunch. And refilled with water. Um, Justin's topped off all his bottles, which is, I think, is 2.1. And I filled up mine, which is, no, I got 2.1. What do you got? You got two. two all right, Justin carries two sevens and a one liter so he's got 2.7 when we left hurricane creek um i carry three sevens so i've got 21 so i went ahead and put about a third of a cnoc i've been carrying a third of a cnoc bag of water and uh we're kind of thinking that we might not get any fresh water until we get to to uh, salt fork which is on the other side of white rock which is mile marker 19 so that's, we still got about uh probably six to seven miles to go before we get there so what we have is what we're gonna, like what we have we can make to there, but if we find water before then we'll probably re-up, I don't know. It seems like I, when when I did it the last couple times, um, this section, it seems like there was some pretty good ground seeps, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm not really I'm not really wet, worried about it, cause I've still got quite a bit of water on me. Sparky, you got anything to say? Nope. Sparky has nothing to say. At this point, we're getting pretty close to White Rock. We still got a ways to go, but we're getting close. We just crossed over the road. I think it's County Road 76 that takes you to White Rock. We actually saw three mountain bikers uh, taking a break, getting ready to do the big downhill. <clears throat> and we're just cruising along. It's 15 till three. Uh, I'm not sure about my mile marker right now, but I don't know. Just wanted to let you guys see a little bit of the trail. Okay, we are on, we're at the junction of the west side of Shores Lake. This is where they share. That's about a two mile section, I think. So we are officially on our way to White Rock at this point. We're working our way down from White Rock down to Salt Fork Creek, which when we were at the junction up there at White Rock, had a couple guys tell us that they heard that it was dry. Um, I feel like the amount of water that that creek moves, that even if it's a dry crossing, there'll be puddles or pools of water. So I'm not really sweating it. We're both super, super tired and low on energy right now, and it's about time to eat. It is 4.39, so I think we're going to get to the creek crossing and take a look at it. If it's a dry crossing, we're gonna just stay, we're gonna hang out right where Puddles and I camped and uh, go ahead and make our dinner. If it's a wet crossing, we're gonna go to the other side and then make our dinner. So that's our plan. We should be coming up in less than a half mile. We should be getting, getting close to the Shores Lake Loop east side. And then the, the creek is just you know, a hundred, hundred feet past that or something. All right, it's three till six. It's three till six. We just got done eating dinner. Uh, Justin had a a Nor bomb. I had pack of gourmet all American burger, and it was delicious. I could have probably ate two of them though. Um, the creek was dry, but luckily there was a couple good sized pools. So we filled up all of our water bottles. We have 
approximately four to four and a half miles to go to get to camp. Uh, beans at six, it's probably gonna be, yeah, that's probably two hours anyhow, so it's gonna be pushing eight o'clock. It is what it is. Just gotta make sure we stay on schedule. All right, it's 12 till seven. So we are losing daylight. We've got about another two miles to go. And uh, we've got on the, we're on the last incline of the day. We're uh, kind of flattened out right now, but there's gonna be another short, steep incline to, to tackle. And then it's gonna immediately start going downhill and pay off at Spirits Creek. I'm a little sore in my back. My back's got a spot about midway up. I took aspirin earlier, or a leave earlier, and uh, it kind of helps. But uh, other than that, I'm good. I'm a little tired. Definitely out of shape. Justin keeps powering up the, the uphills, and then I pass him, and I, I power down the downhills. So we're working off of each other right now and just kind of pulling each other along. Since, lunch, since dinner, my energy kind of took a dive, but now I think my food's finally starting to digest, so I'm kind of getting a second wind. Right now the goal is to get to the top of this thing before we need flashlights, which I don't know if we're going to do. And then flashlight all the way down to, the, to camp. Alright, so it's like 9.30 at night. We did 17.8 miles or something like that. Um, man, we did really good up that hill and everything and then we thought coming down the from that road down to here would be smooth sailing but the weeds were like over six feet tall and it was pretty nutty but we got down here and we've got Derek here which hopefully you'll see him tomorrow it's too dark tonight and uh, it's really nice to have the band back together I like seeing Derek so uh, tomorrow we got about um, 17.8 miles to a camp that we got to go to and I'm looking forward to that. Um, the elevation is going to be a lot nicer tomorrow too, so I'm really looking forward to that. And Derek brought news of some, I guess we're going to have, maybe have some storms on Monday and Tuesday, so that's uh, that's a little concerning, but I'm not worried about it. I knew stuff was going to happen. All right, it is 8 after 8. We uh, got a little bit quicker start this morning, so hopefully that will be a, a common theme. I just keep getting a little earlier and earlier every day. We got about 17.8 to do today. We're crossing Spirits Creek right now, and should be a pretty good day. Hopefully, hopefully the trail maintenance is good. Who knows? Like after last night, I don't know how it can be any worse. Just do what we can. It's 10:30, Sunday, October 10th. We've done around four miles. We're on the expressway right now. Uh, it's pretty overgrown. This part's not too bad, but we have been really doing a lot of weed whacking. The good news is, is all the trees from the last time we were here, oh, 28. Last time we were here, the trees, there's lots of big boy trees across it, and the, the heavy maintenance people have come through and chopped us our way, so that's really good. Spider webs are about not horrible, but they're there. I've been breaking them with my face. Then they just wrap up around your head. It's just disgusting. I hate it, but it is part of the game. There goes one as we speak. Um, that's pretty much all I got. We're, our plan is to hit Fane's Creek for lunch. So I think we're only about three miles out from that. So it won't, won't be long. I've always liked this section of the expressway because of these rocks on the side, on the right side. Super pretty. First time I came through here, there was water dripping in random areas down it. We should be getting really close to the end of the expressway and we can start cutting down to Fane's Creek. It should be all downhill pretty much from, from this point right up here, it'll be all downhill. And we're looking forward to it. Okay, we are, we got about two tenths more of this flat, flattish trail and then it's gonna be our last push uphill. It should be about a half mile less than a mile definitely of uphill grind and it pays off at the top of a, a ridge line with an old road that isn't used anymore. Our plan is to get to there 
take a pack off break for about 20 minutes, hydrate up, get cooled off a little bit because there should be some wind up there. We're already starting to get wind because we're gaining elevation, elevation. So up there's gonna be even windier probably. We're gonna take advantage of that. And then after about 20 minutes break, we're gonna hit it hard because from there down to Cherry Bend is all downhill. Um, we're gonna do that and that's where we're gonna meet up with Derek. Derek's gonna got a water cache for us. So we're gonna fill up on water and then uh, go from there. We're gonna, I think the, I think it's mile marker 41.5 is where we're camping. Uh, it's, there's gonna be like a little junction, uh, a little spur trail. Looks like it's about a 10th of a mile. So uh, it's 2.35. Um, I don't know if we're doing good or not. I really haven't been looking at the numbers a whole lot. I'm just trying to stay on course because this section has been very well maintained recently. But the sections leading up to that was pretty rough, man. It makes a makes for a hard, harder hike when you got a weed whack. But it is what it is. We beat it. And any minute now we're gonna hit some switchbacks and it'll be a push to the top of the this next ridge so we can take a siesta. Alright, so we're at the junction to the rock house. Which way is it? Remember that? That's been like hadn't been a year, has it? We did it this summer. Beginning of summer? Something like that. So yeah, we went up there to Rock House and we got probably like one tenth, maybe a quarter mile at the most, and we're gonna catch Derek and grab some water and we need to haul ass because we still got six more miles after we stop. Woo. That's kind of scary thinking about it. It is what it is. 15 till four. Let's do this thing, buddy. So we are almost to Cherry Bend and we, I mean, we are super, super close. And look at these trees. Some of the worst trail damage I've seen in, in a minute. Okay, it's four o'clock and we just left Cherry Bend. We've got six miles to camp. Here's the deal, Cherry Bend is at like mile 35-ish. At 36, between 36 and 38, there's a couple of landslides that they've been blasted in social media about and how the trail is semi-closed. So we need to do six miles tonight and we need to hope that this landslide area isn't bad and that we can get through it before it gets dark because then it's going to be, I mean, we don't even know what it is yet. It might not be that bad. That's our, that's our hope. Anyhow, we're following the pig trail. Right now, at some point, it's going to cross over. We'll be on the other side of it. And then that's when uh, the games will begin, I guess. We'll see where th what this landslide's all about. We just crossed over Highway 23, so now we're, uh, we're officially farther than I've ever gone on this trail. And um, it's all new to me now, finally. I've been to Cherry Bend a couple times, but now I'm breaking new ground on a new experience. This is awesome. All right, well, we're going, we found our first big obstacle, big old tree root system. And if you can use Justin as a scale, that thing is monstrous and the trail is right over there and goes right, I mean, basically it fell over the, you gotta work around this direction. So, up there was that big cave-in that I showed you and the trail comes around here but now it's got us again so it's just one big tree basically oh, it's, it's about two or three big trees just got to fight through it looks like we're walking around it Hey, hold on. When you get when you get to the trail, hang on. I think I got one of your socks. Yeah. It fell off in a good spot. Mile marker 36.8. So far, the only really thing that we would call landslides are trees down 
and some in some instances it, it pulled the root ball up and destroyed part of the trail. And they're pretty big trees, and they covered all. They the were trail. massive trees. There's at least three of them. And uh, they're, they're easy workarounds. So. Easy workarounds, just extra work. Uh, definitely have to go off trail because there's no trails made yet. Is what it is. Uh, 36 and 38 was his magic number, so I think it's I don't I think it's just multiple things between those two, but it's all it's all speculation because I honestly don't know. Not many. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of reports other than landslides. Okay, we are just taking a big time break. We have basically two. Let's see, four miles to camp, and it's almost five o'clock. We'll probably leave here at five. That's going to be a minimum two hours, so that's six, that's going to be eight, probably eight o'clock, which yesterday, we I can't remember exactly what time we pulled in, but it was about eight to eight thirty. Um, the one good thing again tonight is Derek will be there and he'll probably have a fire going, so it's always nice to when you pull into camp, there's already a fire, you just chill out instantly. Um, this camp is at like 41.5 and there's, it, it's got a sign or it's got a spur trail that goes to a camp it's probably a tenth of a mile so at the end of the day we're just looking for a sign that says that way what do you think sparko i'm looking forward to getting there yes soon soon is good this day has been long warm decent but still very tiring and very trying i agree Okay, so we came to the end of this little smooth trail there. It's super easy to follow, and then all of a sudden, boom. Uh, we're pretty sure this is landslide because there's big creases right there, and they, they go all the way to underneath that. You can see where it's broken off, and like it goes up into there. So we are right now standing on the part that slid, and it's root balls, rocks, and big trees. We're going to navigate through it. All right, so that was definitely a landslide area. We've made it back to the trail. And uh, we're going to see what other fun things. You can see the big crack in the, there's huge cracks in this where the, the land has fallen to the right downhill. Looks like some of this might be a little older, it looks like. Yeah. So this, must, this place is prone to tree damage. And it just takes out the whole root ball every time it does. This is going to be a fun one. What? Yeah, I will if you don't. What are you doing? Okay. I got you. Ugh. Your knee bones. <laughs> this is stupid. Okay, I think I'm at the point now where I need an extra hand, so I'm going to put the GoPro down. Well, we've come to the end of the trail, and it's a big landslide, just like everybody said. This one is a spooky one. We can try to do the rim. We're going to probably go the rim, yeah. Bushwhack around it to the left. Let's go straight. And then just try to find where the trail is. Because that's sketchy. I'm not... Even if I went down that, I don't know where we're supposed to go. Yeah, it's just straight across. Let's try to do the rim. Yeah, I want to back off the rim like 10 feet, 20 feet. Okay. All right, we made it through it. It just randomly starts back up, but look at the view. All right, it's 8.07, and we just saw this sign. That means we're point one, one tenth away from camp, and we are ready. We're both beat and irritable all right so it is 8 30 and we just left camp uh the junction camp was pretty pretty wind filled and rainy okay so the battery died a minute ago and uh the wind was whipping down pretty pretty fast and it was getting chilly so we decided to walk this ridge line into the trees before i changed my battery but i'm back and i'm wanted to go back to what we were talking about that was the junction that goes to a, a camp 
where we stayed. Derek met us there. He parked at a, there's a trailhead about two miles uh, prior to the camp, and uh, he camped with us. And then we rode out a massive storm. Uh, the winds were like in the 50s, probably. I mean, it was it was whipping and it was raining hard. Um, pretty much stayed dry for the most part. Thanks, Sparky. Got his boots wet a little bit. Uh, didn't place them properly, but it is what it is. They're fine now. Yeah. Everything in my backpack and on the outside of my backpack is pretty much good. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Except for the boots and the liners and stuff, but thank goodness for wool socks. Cause yeah. I, and, I can't feel it. And Dyneema tarps. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> in my All first right. time, I had a tarp set up and no problems. So it was 8.30 when we left and it's it's been 15 minutes, so... Um, I should have got this big ridge for you right there, but I think Sparky got some pictures I might be able to add into the to the thing later. Uh, now that I got a fresh battery, I can start keeping an eye on things for you guys. So it, uh, we ended up doing 70 or 17.5 uh, yesterday, according to my GPS, and uh, it is day four. It is Monday. Starting to sprinkle. We got a workaround right here. Yeah, I see a blaze on the other side. Yeah, that's definitely a good sprinkle. I knew that sky looked heavy with rain. Ugh. Okay. Yep. Okay, well if the map's correct, this is Harrods Creek, and it is bone dry. I don't see any water yet. We were going to fuel up here with water, but that's looking like it's not going to be the case. And we also had a chance that Derek was going to meet us here with a water cache, but he said if the road is too squirrely, he wasn't going to do it. There's water down there. All right. Like up here? No, like down the river. Because that looks like it goes to the same place. It's a weird place. That way? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go off trail and go get some water. Yep, I see some. And then I guess we go right, there's a blaze right there and we... We stopped at Herod Creek and I had a lunch. Justin had a heavy snack. Um, I had Alpine Air creamy beef and noodle dinner. Uh, it was really good. I think it said 700 calories. I feel really, really good. Um, last night I was super tired. I mean, I went to bed like at 9.30. Uh, I didn't stay up and chat with anybody. Didn't even have a drink, so I went to bed. It stormed all night, so the wind was constantly pushing me around. This morning was chilly, especially on the high, high ridge line. Wind was blowing through there. But uh, I'm back in my t-shirt and I'm sweating again, so it must have got warmer. We're getting close to mile marker 49 and this is the second big tree that we've seen. This one's so big you can't even see the trail. It's over there somewhere. So I'm probably going to go up and around this thing. It's really too big to go through. All right. Cool. What'd you find? Mile marker 50. Holy crap, 50. That's awesome. We're about 20% uh, done with the entire trail. Almost. Hell yeah. Yeah, they are. You all right? Yeah. Watch out, it's soft. It's like ridiculously soft and kind of slick. Yeah, that was 
Big old tree. Look at these. How cool is that? Some really cool rock structures in through here. Uh, we are at, what, mile 53-ish? 53? Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. Somewhere close to 53. And just got these great, super cool stone cliff faces or whatever you want to call them. The cliffs. Check out these rock formations. This is unbelievable. I love stuff like this. Look at all the big crazy rocks. Man, little creek at the bottom. And now we're just walking at the base of this monstrous bluff. Pretty awesome. This is the coolest space, coolest stretch that I've seen so far. Definitely my favorite. I'm gonna have to log what mile marker this is because this is just absolutely beautiful. Super cool. This is beautiful. Wow, it's got like a little pond that's raised. This is pretty neat. Back into the brush.